Welcome. In this lecture, I am going to show how the scientific method can be applied to a simple mundane day to day example. To begin with, let us review all the steps that are involved in applying a scientific method. Well, the main objective of the scientific method is to minimize scientist bias on the outcome. So, that is the prime objective of the scientific method. The first and foremost thing is observation or characterization or the measurements. Conducting experiments and collecting observation is a supreme, uh, supremely important part of the scientific method. The next thing is to propose a fundamental theoretical explanation of the causative mechanism that gives rise to the observations or the measurements. So, this is hypothesis. So, we hypothesize, we come up with a theoretical explanation of the causative mechanism. Now, once you have a hypothesis, it can be used to predict other phenomena which are associated with the same fundamental cause. And then, once you have predictions, you want to check whether these predictions can be verified through experiments. So, this step is validation of the predictions. Now, if the test of hypothesis or validation of prediction fails, then we go back and revise our hypothesis. We try to come up with a hypothesis that explains not only what has already been explained by the previous hypothesis, but it explains the new observations, the test that was conducted to check the predictions. So, this is a cyclic process and it goes on improving itself, it goes on improving the understanding of the nature. Now, let us let us see how we can apply this to a simple day to day example. Let us take an example from you know this room, let us say the computer monitor display is blank. This is an observation. And now, to understand the causative mechanism, I want to apply the scientific method. So, let us hypothesize. The first hypothesis that I propose, general power failure. Now, if there is a general power failure, I can use this hypothesis to predict some other phenomena. For example, I can say that all powered equipment in this room should be down. This is a consequence of hypothesizing that there is a general power failure. Now, we should be able to test this prediction. So, we switch on other equipment, we switch on let us say the projector, we switch on uh, the bulbs, the lights and we find that some of them are working, some of them do not work. Now, if my hypothesis that there is a general power failure was correct, then all this equipment should not start at all. But I find that some of them are working and some of them are not working. This means the experiments that I conducted show that the hypothesis is false. So, now by the spirit of the scientific method, I should revise my hypothesis because the tests that are used to check the predictions have shown that the hypothesis is not correct. So, I go back and rehypothesize. Let us say this room has multiple phases and now we hypothesize that at least one of the phase has failed, not that all the phases have failed but one of the phases failed. Now, if you make this new hypothesis, what is the prediction? I can predict based on this hypothesis that all equipment that are powered by this particular phase, which is hypothesized to be failed, should be down. So, I can look at the equipment that are connected to this phase on which my monitor is connected. I switch on 
one by one each of these equipment and I find that these equipment too are not getting switched on. So, the test that I devised to check the predictions of the new hypothesis has told me that this new hypothesis is indeed correct. Now there is no need to rehypothesize, it is confirmed that only one phase has failed. This is just an application of the scientific method to a simple day to day example. In scientific endeavor as engineers, as scientists, we are expected to apply this method to different problems that we encounter in different technical or scientific work. So, what is crucial is what we call as the testability of an hypothesis. In the scientific method, what we have to understand is that the experiments are supreme. What is most important that if you hypothesize something, then the validation of this hypothesis is essential, is absolutely essential. And to do this validation, we have to conduct experiments, we have to make predictions using the, using the hypothesis and then to validate these predictions, we have to conduct the experiments. What is important is that this hypothesis or the model should be testable, it should be verifiable through some observations. That means, the predictions I should be able to confirm them by conducting some experiments. And these experiments should be of the type which anyone can conduct, we cannot come up with an explanation for failure of the monitor saying that the monitor failed because some aliens have taken control. If there is no way of checking such a hypothesis by somebody else, well this is not the right hypothesis. So, a hypothesis, a valid hypothesis is the one in which we can verify the predictions using experiments, independent experiments by different people, by different scientists, by different engineers. So, testability of the hypothesis is the key. The tests that you conduct should be reproducible, very, very important aspect of the scientific method. What is important? That the test result should be reproducible by independent people, independent groups, independent researchers who decide to follow identical procedure. So, this is one of the key features of the scientific method and it should be time invariant. For static hypothesis, if you do this today, if you do it tomorrow, if you do it after a year, I should be able to get the same test results. Now, once you have validated your hypothesis by conducting test and not only you, by multiple people, by multiple groups in different times have tested predictions based on certain hypothesis or models that were developed based on this hypothesis. What happens gradually is that such tested, well tested, time tested hypothesis or models grow into a theory. A scientific theory is nothing but set of models or set of hypotheses that have withstood all or several falsification tests. The test that we actually conduct, that we devise to check the predictions are called as falsification test and a scientific theory is one that withstands many, many such falsification test through different researchers, through different research groups at different times. So, the scientific method actually involves repeated application of testing or repeated application of checking the observations, making new hypothesis, making new predictions, testing these predictions through experiments and trying to devise new experiments that will probably falsify the existing hypothesis through continued testing to continued uh, falsification test. 
models grow into a scientific theory. 